Thank you for joining me for another installment of Julian's projects, Julian's random projects. I uh, thought I'd continue along with these uh, goofy uh, Schumacher 410, 410 watt uh, inverters that I got a big stack of. Um, one of the big, com one of the common problems I found with a lot of them, some of the ones that had, you know, perfectly nice looking fans. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. Um, in here, there's no dust or dirt inside there, uh, indicating to me they either got very few hours or were never used, in fact. And the PCB on the inside, the circuit board in there, is like really shiny and clean looking. There's no dust or dirt. Uh, usually an indication that it's not been used. Uh, especially for something like this, it's, it's probably designed to go inside your car or what have you. Um, so anyways, the most common thing was the switch, and so I thought I'd give you guys a quick rundown of how I plan to do that. Uh, it's very simple. We will just get our soldering iron going. It's a gas-powered soldering iron because I am off-grid out here in the garage, and soldering irons can take a lot of power, which I currently do not have. Out here, so let's set that up there and hope that it doesn't catch anything on fire. All right, awesome. Um, if you guys are getting into electronics or you're doing like car audio stuff, a little um, portable soldering iron like this, um, these ones are made by a company called Wheeler. Uh, they're pretty good. I've had these for going on over 10 years and they work great. Uh, they also come with different tips. These things can be screwed off, uh, and there's like interchangeable tips here. So you have little blow torches and different size soldering irons. That's kind of just a general tip soldering iron um, tip here. My my advice, if you want to have this thing last a long time, is to tin your tips. So keep this clean. Uh, you won't see me doing that in this. Well, I'll do it at the end, but you you won't see. Um, yeah, another good thing to have a damp sponge to kind of wipe this thing off after it's hot and, and, and warmed up and then use it and when you're done flow a bunch of solder on that tip let it cool and then put it away because when you do that uh, metal all metals oxidize and degrade over time and what you're doing is you're putting a, a layer of what's later going to be thrown away lead if you can see on this one there's a big glob of it here and that as it sat in my toolbox just oxidized when it was solid and now that it's melted I will flick it off and you're back to fresh metal. So those are fun little projects. Those are, those are cool little pieces of, of kit there. Uh, so I don't know my gloves on. Let's see if I can. So I also like to use gloves when I can. You know, it's not like a crazy project, but I have nicked myself more times than I can count. Um, it's always good to have some kind of protection when you're dealing with little uh, sharp edges and stuff. And th these extruded aluminum cases, the, the way that they're made, and it's extruded like like pasta out of a pasta maker. If you've ever made pasta, uh, this outer part here, if you look down the side, it's it's uh, the same all the way down, all the way down the ridges here. And that's because this thing comes out of um, like an assembly line in one long extruded piece. It just keeps coming and coming and coming and coming and then they hack it off. And then it keeps coming and coming and coming and then they hack another piece off. And uh, different, you know, there's engineers have these things made to different specifications and size and the fins to be a certain depth or thickness uh, for heat sinking and stuff and they end up being a very very cheap way to make it because all you have to do is bolt stuff to the, the inside of it and then put two little caps on this side and that side and you're done right so you'll see lots of extruded aluminum cases but uh, they are not finished they don't expect anybody to be in here working on things and so it, when if you do or if you're servicing something like this uh, which is not by definition this is not a serviceable thing it's just you they're so cheap when they break you just throw them away and get a new one uh, but some of us are geeks and we like tinkering with things and so we're gonna get in here and if you do that without any kind of gloves 
eventually you're going to be sitting here you know, wrenching on something like here when we go to remove this switch. And when you do, you're going to slip. And all that inertia from your hand you know, pushing on something is going to slip. And when you slip like this, you'll look down and you'll have a big chunk of your finger missing from just some jaggy little edge that's in here. You know, it's just some un unfinished piece of metal. And you're looking at thousands of dollars worth of a hospital visit, um, possible infections, and it's a big pain in the dick. So use gloves. This for building computer cases, I mean, any, anything like that. So, um, as I was talking, I'm removing this thing. I'm also removing it, again, with an inanimate object. Uh, I'm trying to keep my fingers from getting pinched inside of here. So you just, this is the broken one, so we can be really mean to it. You just tear apart, pull it out of here. And then once you get it out, we'll flick off our solder. Like that. Come in here. There's no positive or negative to this thing. It's like getting resistors in backwards. It's, it's impossible. So just pull off either end of this switch. It's a really simple switch. Come on. I'm also wearing safety goggles because I don't want a ball of solder to flick up in my face and catch me in the eyeball. Um, yeah, here we go. Sorry. Reach back behind the camera here. Grab my donor switch. Come on. I'll just, oops, uh, is there a difference between on and off? <laughs> I'm looking at some of the other ones here on my desk. Uh, I'll kind of have a little one for the binary zero and one on the top. So I'm pushing that in. It's in. I previously slid some heat shrink on here. When you start getting into this stuff, you will forget to do that. And then solder this on and then go, damn it. <laughs> Desolder it, put the heat shrink on, and do it all over again. There we go. Um, another thing you can do is throw a little bit of flux down on this thing and cl you know clean it up some before you reflow it. I don't care. It's, it's, this isn't this isn't NASA. This thing's not going to space, you know. Um, I'm just trying to get a good wetting action here on the solder. Ooh. I had to hold that there for a second because the the tab on this switch has got so much m metal mass to it. It it really it held on to the heat more than I thought it was going to off of this. And I'm wondering if that's why this thing fails. Um, yeah. So uh, as promised, as he wipes it on his jeans because I don't have a sponge over here. Um, go. Some solder. Cheap stuff. Radio Shack. Here we go. Uh, this is the tinning of the tip I was mentioned at the beginning of this video. Um, see, I'm just, I already wiped it off the old gunk. Maybe melted pieces of plastic or insulation were on the tip. Um, wiped all that off. And then just come in here and just, you know, shove a bunch of solder on this thing and let it melt. And then turn it off. And that will solidify and protect your tip from oxidation. Done and done. Um, yeah, that was kind of interesting. I, I want to point that out to you guys. Um, let me get in here. So, you see this little tab here. I don't know if my camera's going to focus on that or not. The This tab for the switch, it, there, it's actually a really thick switch, or like a thick tab. It's not, it's not a... Um, a lot of switches have a really thin bit of metal here, and because it's so thick, when I came in here with my soldering iron and heated it up, it had to get up to you know 600 degrees Fahrenheit or something to melt the solder, and it did that just fine. And then I put the wire down, removed the heat, and usually what you'd see with these kind of switches and other little through through hole uh, components is that just a, a second later you'll see the solder solidify. It'll kind of just, it'll go from being liquid looking to, to to solid. And it didn't do that. It stayed liquid for a very long time. And the reason it did that is because it's, it's thick. It has a lot of thermal mass. So it's holding on to the heat a lot like your iron does when you're, when you're ironing a, a t-shirt or you're ironing one of your shirts or something. It's designed to have a lot of thermal mass. Uh, 
th and that, now that's got me thinking th that might be why a lot of these switches were breaking if if i'm a, if i'm a operator in china and, and i'm assembling this thing i i don't necessarily know that that's a problem and so i'm just soldering this thing like i do anything else and if i hold the heat in here for too long it's going to start to melt the rest of this cheap little plastic switch and so a lot of the other ones it, it's just the mechanism of the actual like tick tock of the switch is what's failed and i bet that's what it's what's happening here it's just getting so hot and and melting all the plastic around it and then just destroying the switch when you go to solder it on. Hmm. All right, so then we just, uh, that's not this is the boring part, but we take our heat shrink and we slide it down so that nothing shorts out on the switch and turns this thing on when you don't want it on. So let's slide that over our connector here. Good enough. Um, like I said, if you, if you had the, the the torch version of this, you can come in here and like shh, do this thing. Sometimes you have a little bit of residual heat here for thin stuff, and you can just hold it near it, and it'll shrink it up. Uh, or you can come in with the good old lighter and and just hit it up. I'm not putting the flame right on it, just near it. Just let some of that radiant heat shrink that heat shrink down. You'll see it grab the, the terminal at the top. And you're done. There you go. So there's that. There you go. Job done. Brand new switch, which I tested before I put it in here with my ohm meter. Uh, oh, you. Uh, I never know the the skill level of people that are watching. So uh, you know, there's some things that I, I gloss over that you know, in, in hindsight, might be interesting to people that are getting into electronics for the first time. Um, you know, like continuity. Um, so I've got my handy dandy multimeter. I have it set, uh, you can have it set to ohms, right? And then what you'd be looking for is a dead short, you'd be, for a switch that is. You'd look for something like that, as you see there it's got 0 0.2 ohms. You know, 0 is pretty close to none. Um, and that's that's what a switch does, it just does that, see? Tick tock, tick tock, right? Um, but Lots of these little uh, multimeters come with uh, a little piezoelectric speaker, so that when you're not you don't you're not looking at it, whenever it sees a short like that, so you go down to zero, it beeps at you. So it's pretty handy, right? Uh, so what you do is you come in here and you can test your switch by putting the two of these together. I've got one on either side, right? And then when I flip the switch, it beeps. Telling me I have continuity. Uh, I'm also I'm testing both sides of that switch. If it if it beeped when I came in here, you know, if it beeps on both, it could beep when it's supposed to be off, <laughs> or it could you know never beep at all. So there's lots of there's actually there's not lots of different. There's two ways that a, a switch can fail, and those are the ways. There it's short when you don't intend it to be, or it's open when you don't intend it to be. Get, get yourself a multimeter if you don't have one. If you're getting into electronics, get one of these. So you, not, you don't necessarily need this fluke model. Uh, they're pretty rugged. Uh, but you can get some other ones for like 30 bucks. Uh, they will pay for themselves very quickly. So that's it, uh, for at least for this installment. I'll, I'll try and keep some of these videos short. Uh, so this is basically replacing a switch, as, as all we did today. And I will, some of our next videos will be buttoning these up and, and doing some stress testing. Um, but I've got to charge some really big batteries for that because my power supply only goes up to 3 amps. So thanks for joining me on Julian's Random Projects, and I will see you in the next video.